All right, hello and welcome to another expert inside interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by um, Kaylin Ellsbury and her dog. <laughs> hey! <laughs> And Kaylin, for those of you who haven't heard of her, is a, is an Amazon best-selling author with the book "I Am the Untold uh, Story of Success." But Kaylin's story is is very interesting because um, born with cystic fibrosis, told that you wouldn't live past fourteen, then at twenty five asked to make like end of life arrangements. You know, which wow, I mean, is mind blowing. But then you uh, then you started looking into how people can become and fulfill their full potential and you wanted to thrive rather than just live. So you wrote this best selling book and you've gone out and you speak to companies and you've helped um, lots of uh, of companies, entrepreneurs and business people start to reach and achieve their full potential. Yeah, I mean, that summed it up pretty yeah. much. Um, I did get my uh, my general practitioner's license in neurolinguistic programming, too. I thought that that had a unique extra add-on for when I go to the companies. Um, and it's it's been fun. We've founded an online school to teach people um, some of these basic components. It's, it's been a whirlwind. Yeah. So let's let's start back uh, at the beginning. Uh, so how did you figure out how to uh, parlay what you were experiencing into something that could help, uh, you know, people in, you know, in their life in, t- in general, but in business as well? Yeah. So the thing is, I did it selfishly at first because I thought nobody would buy the book like my mom. Right. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Um, but I didn't I didn't expect it to to have the momentum in which it had. And what I basically did is I interviewed all of these famous entrepreneurs, people that I wanted to be like, Mm -hmm. and a certain pattern emerged. And that was what the nine chapters became. It was the nine patterns I found. And what was interesting is, so in neuro-linguistic programming, there's this concept of, um, is something meta or are we chunking down on the details? And whenever you're having a decision in life, you need to go meta to get what you agree on, and then you can chunk down. And I realized what I wanted was to be a powerful woman in business. Um, Mm -hmm. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to have the income, the lifestyle, all that stuff, but I couldn't because my CF was in the way. And then I realized, you know what, if it's not CF, it's going to be something else. And so I went kind of the, the big picture and I was like, is there anything in common between today's most successful, happy, financially well off entrepreneurs and having a terminal illness? And the answer is, yeah, they're, they're, they are the exact same struggles. We just, paint them differently. Right. So um, so let's get into what, what some of those struggles are, because I was actually, I wrote a blog post the other day, but I was, uh, I, I find that one of the most fascinating things is, is that people, um, a lot of people have a fear of failure, right? Totally. But a lot of people actually have a fear of success. And, uh, you know, they may want the things that you're talking about, but then they almost talk themselves out of it because it seems like it's it's going to have too much of an impact or they don't think they can handle it or their lifestyle may change. And so they actually put all these barriers in front of uh, you know trying to achieve success. Totally. And yeah. Um, what is that quote? It's our greatest fears are not that we are inadequate, it's that we are powerful beyond our comprehension. I think that's the mm-hmm. quote. Um and it's true. So if you're not blaming CF for why you don't have what you want, you're going to blame something else. Mm-hmm. So it just comes down to what you're giving it power to. Yeah. So what were some of the patterns then that you uh, you were able to identify from the successful entrepreneurs? Yeah, um, obviously the power of habit, like, you know, Charles Duhigg made that trendy. Um, but some of their habits were all very in line. And I never set out to find commonalities. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to interview them. I didn't think that far ahead. <laughs> and um when I did, I was like, holy crap. So the, the power of habit was severely, you know, I always thought of habits as bad, but there's mm-hmm. good habits, who knew? Right. So it was that. And then it was that consistent discipline focus. The other interesting thing that I had found, they all were highly passionate about sales. And sales wasn't a dirty word. It was just a part of their persona. And then perhaps the most surprising is I found there was a direct correlation. And this blows my mind to this day direct correlation between how much they made and how much they gave. Mm. And the people who had the most income, the most um, passive income, et cetera, always gave the most. And right. not just for dollar sign, but like by sheer percentage of their their earnings. It was fascinating. Right. And that probably also includes of their time, of uh, of their insight, of all of that kind of stuff too, you know, constantly giving back. 
Absolutely. And that's what I thought was, um, it was the co-founder of Netflix that said, you know, I'll, if I find a project I'm passionate about, I'll either give time or money. I won't give both. Um, mm. But whatever he does give, it, he goes all in. And I mm. thought that that was fascinating. So let's go, let's talk a little bit about, you know, you were saying, um, you know, consistent discipline focus, right? And, and let's face it, today, the thing that I hear the most and, and everybody loves to say is like, oh, we're we're busier than we've ever been before. Like, I'm so busy. And I always say, well, are we or are we just more distracted than we've ever been before? Because we have a ton of things that we can use to distract us from what we're doing. So how do you how do you uh, help people really uh, focus and, and get get this, uh, you know, get laser focus? Because that just seems to be lacking today. And so many people can't focus. It's not a lack of focus to me. It's a lack of prioritization. Mm -hmm. So, cause we can focus, right? We can get, um, you know, like I've, I've got some coaching clients and <laughs> they can focus on Instagram for hours, sure, right? Sure, yeah. But they can't focus on building the business mm -hmm. behind their Instagram mm -hmm. for hours. So it's like, is it, is it a platform for you to relax and escape or is it a platform for you to make money? Mm -hmm. You know? And so it's when you can put them into the mindset of what they want most Focus isn't the issue ever. So I would say if you're having struggles and you're like, oh, I'm so busy, I'm doing everything, um, you're probably doing a lot of things you're just not passionate about or that you don't care about. And right. it's a way to excuse you from having to commit to what you do care about. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good I think that's a good point around, you know, commitment, because as as humans, we hate making choices. Right. We so we make a choice of not making choices and therefore we keep doing and everything. Yeah, and that's a choice. And so uh, you're correct, like prioritization, you know, uh, becomes a big issue. So. I mean, when you talk to people, like, how do you help them sort of start to prioritize which are the things that really should get their focus? Um, so in one of my clients, uh, love him to pieces, he actually had that conversation a couple of weeks ago. So he was just all over the place. And then I realized I always go whatever is closest to the dollar. Mm -hmm. So when you're in business, money makes the world go round, right? Sure. Like we want to say it's giving back. We want to say it's helping people because it is. But you can't help people unless you financially help yourself. Exactly. So we would always say, I, I had him break it down and say, you know, what are the top 30 things you need to accomplish this week? And he's like, oh, gosh, there's more than 30. I can't focus. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, give me number one. Give me number two. And then come to find out there's only like 15 things. So mm -hmm. he was dramatically overestimating. Mm -hmm. And then each of the 15 things had a very clear section. You know, this one's on social media. This one's on my sales pipeline. This one, and as solopreneurs... Um, it, it gets stressful. And so when we broke it down, it was only five sections. Well, get this. How many days are there in a week? Mm -hmm, five. five. Mm -hmm. So each section, each day, you can knock out all of your 30 overwhelming tasks <laughs> in a single day. And so that was how we had found a, a huge pattern for him. Yeah, and I think you just hit on an interesting point there because, you know, let's face it, uh, as I was saying, we can look at our workload and go, oh, there's just so much to do. And then we let that, we that's a get out of jail card or, or something that paralyzes us rather than digging down into what is actually really important. As you say, I mean, if you're an entrepreneur or most people in business is like, what is actually contributing to driving revenue? Yeah. And for him, it was, you know, he was in a situation where he had just started his business. And of course, we all know there's times where you can't, like, mm -hmm. money is tough. Sure. So it was like, if money is tough for you right now, what are the top five things you need to do on Monday to get the ball rolling so by Friday you have income? And for him, just seeing it like that really helped. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the other patterns that you uncovered when you were, you know, um, interviewing these entrepreneurs? Yeah, I mean, we'll go back a little bit and just their passion for sales. Mm -hmm. And their passion for making a decision and then just sticking with it, modifying it as it needs, but just writing something out, you know, so if they are, they're on a call and the, the client's not doing exactly what they want them to do, or they've hired somebody and that the hiring process just isn't going well, it's all sales to them. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting thing that you just said there about writing it out, though, is because when you start things, right, you know, there's normally an initial bump, but I mean, especially if you're going through a change process or you're implementing something new or you're trying, you know, maybe you're launching a new product or whatever, there's an initial bump. And then there's always a period of, there's always a little bit of a dip or a period of time when it's a little bit hard. And that's the time when a lot of people quit or they go, oh, this was a mistake or whatever. You know, sometimes it is, but it's, it's having the fortitude to keep going through that tough part that always comes. I think that's uh, that's something that, uh, you know, that there's 
unfortunately, you know, a lot of people lack is the fortitude to see it through. Yeah. And to me, it always comes down to plan for that, you know, and mm-hmm. when you have those slumps, cool, you worked hard enough to get to that slump. Mm hmm. A little bit of a mind bend there. Yeah, exactly. And being passionate about sales, like you were saying, is is that uh, you know some people still see sales as a dirty word, and they're still influenced by pop culture and by you know Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, and all of this kind of stuff, and seeing you know that sales see salespeople as a used car salesman, you know, with trying to con you into a car. But the reality is, is without sales, you know, sales introduces you to solutions, to things that can help you. It's a very noble, I mean, we see it certainly as, you know, one of the most noble professions out there. Um, so how do you help people like see it like that? Because as you said, I mean, the passion for sales is incredibly important uh, for, for the successful entrepreneurs. Yeah, I mean, it always kind of blows people away that I'm a salesperson first and foremost, right? Mm-hmm. So They follow my socials for a while and they might think like, oh, she's just this fun little entrepreneurial (laughs) chick. Um, I've got, it's so stupid, but I love it. I have a little, it's just out of reach. (laughs) Um, But like I had a gift from a client and it's like Barbie in a box. It says entrepreneur Barbie. (laughs) But you know what? Like every process that I have done ever in my business, whether it's growing the social media, monetizing the social media, keynote speaking and the coaching side, it's all been a sale. And if you're coming at it like it is a dirty word and not noble, well, Mm -hmm. then you're probably going to struggle a lot. And the reason people think it's a dirty word is because there's so many really bad salespeople out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so when you find the good ones, you just need to recognize there is another path. Yeah. And I think part of it, too, is uh, that uh, unfortunately, a lot of salespeople don't invest enough in themselves in terms yeah. of like, uh, you know, in terms of learning and training and developing. I mean, I, I, I would say you should look at your look at your life and say, OK, maybe you play golf. Maybe you do something. How much time do you invest on your on practicing your swing? Right. And does mm-hmm. your and does your golf put bread on the table? Probably not. It's yeah. your other job that puts bread on the table. How much time are you investing and in, uh, practicing that? Yeah. You'd be amazed how many salespeople I work with, um, and I refuse to work with them after a while because it was insane. Um, you go, what books do you like? Or mm-hmm. what seminars have you gone to? Or who do you listen to? And they go, now and I just kind of know it all. Right. Are you kidding me? Like, that's the sign that you are the worst salesperson I've ever heard <laughs> if you're not open to new ideas. Like, how are you going to talk to your customers? Like, hey, let me tell you about this service. I know it all. Like, shut up. <laughs> so that's why people think it's dirty because there's dirty people out there not actually learning what they need to learn yeah. my other favorite one by the way is when people say well you know i don't put sales on my business card you know i don't have sales on it i have some other title and i always go "Ooh, guess what prospect customer they know you're a salesperson doesn't yeah. matter what you put on your card so be the best salesperson you can be and stop pretending that you're not <laughs> yeah and i get i get the strategy of why because it turns people off but like if the title turns them off, you probably turn them off before they found out your title. <laughs> yeah. And if you're good, their title is not going to matter, right? Yeah. If it's good, they're like, I'm working with the best salesperson. <laughs> Let me tell you all about them. Yeah. yeah. Right. So so maybe tell me a little bit about some of the good breakthroughs you've had with people when you're coaching them. Because I'm always interested in, you know, when you had some maybe big, you know, maybe you found some people you thought, oh, I'm never going to be able to turn this around. And then you turned it around. And just give us some examples of those. So it's not up. <laughs> yeah, no names. <laughs> obviously, I love or hate this part. Yeah, it's not up to me to turn them around. It's up to them, right? Sure. That's the stuff we're mm. supposed to say. Okay, now that that's out of the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I always have, um, and I'm not your traditional coach. I found mm. this out. Um, I had some coaches, like legit coaches, reach out and be like, "You're doing it wrong," and I'm like, "Yeah, but I'm getting results, so mm-hmm. who cares?" Yeah. So if you ever do like reach out to me, um, just know it's not traditional because I go tactical. I'm not just going to tell you to come up with your own answers. Mm. I'm gonna, if you're messing up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you out on it. Um, right. that's, we, we, we jokingly call it the shark mindset. <laughs> another program, another day. Um, actually, it ties in well. So one of the breakthroughs is I have a client, um, and I, I love this client to death. I've been working with him for like six months. And we do very tactical business and sales coaching on these calls, social media and sales, right? Mm-hmm. And he was really down the dumps. He was a former addict who we've helped turn on to being a keynote speaker. He's been getting gigs. He's been crushing it. And he had a relapse, not to addiction, but to he had to have he had a health setback that required surgery. And he was fearful that without being able to go to the gym, he'd want to engage in some bad habits again. Right. Big picture. 
So I'm listening to him complain for about five minutes. And that's really the only patience I have. <laughs> and I go, I'm kind of hearing victim, not shark. Mm-hmm. And he goes, well, what are you talking about? I'm like, all you've been talking about is, oh, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. And I was like, you just keynoted a stage that you would have killed for a week ago, made serious money. Now you have to have surgery. Did it ever occur to you that you have to have surgery so that way you could help the people in your audience overcome adversity also? Or are you just playing mm-hmm. the selfish card? Because one I've got time for, one I don't. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm either going to coach a shark or a victim. I, and I'm not hearing shark out of you today. And he goes, teach me to be a shark. <laughs> you know, and like, like that. Like, and then the next thing I see on his Instagram and some of his socials, he's like, I'm helping you turn adversity into achievement. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you this. And he was just so real and raw and authentic. And in literally that amount of time, we could break his pattern of what he was thinking and just snap him to a new reality. Mm-hmm. And so it's different for everybody. But yeah, no, no, that's a, that's a fantastic example because I do think that, um, you know, obviously as humans, when faced with adversity, you know, a natural instinct in many people is to have a pity party and to say, okay, well, it's all outside of my control. But I mean, in your point, and obviously your life um, points to this as well, is that you have to look at, you know, what's in your control and how you can actually maximize those things. Totally. And it's okay to have a breakdown. Like, Mm -hmm. I can't say that enough. So if you're going through stuff right now and you're listening to this, cool, listen to it, be a human. That's what it's Mm -hmm. like. If somebody dies, take days to mourn. Like, Mm -hmm. we're supposed to experience emotions. But there's a point on everybody's life where the emotions either serve them or don't serve them. And if I notice that these emotions aren't serving you in the humanistic form, I'm going to break your pattern and change the way you're thinking on it. That's what you pay me for. Like, that's what I need to do. Excellent. So in the last few minutes we have here, um, is there one other pattern that you would like to um, particularly highlight? Yes. Like a breakthrough? Yes. Okay. So this happened two days ago and I'm ecstatic. Okay. So picture this 85 year old man, right? 85. And he suffered a really big accident um, three years ago, lost his ability to speak loudly. So now it's all a whisper and it's very raspy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And everybody since the accident likes to call him, you know, grandkids, friends, everything. How are you feeling? Right. And that's the question. And he's like, he's been so overwhelmed with that. And you may have to bleep this out. So I'll say bleep. (laughs) And I go, and he goes, how do you deal with that? Because people are always asking me, how do you feeling? Because I live in a hospital Mm halftime, right? Mm-hmm. And I started getting angry because I'd say, oh, I'm not feeling well today. And then people were like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And then that's the end of the discussion. So I said to tell him anytime anybody asks how he's feeling, like a champion. And I, I inserted a curse word sure. that's not mm-hmm. perfect for radio. <laughs> and um, he goes, do you want me to say that? And he's an old attorney. So it's like hilarious. And I go, yes, with confidence. And then follow it up with, would you like to hear what I accomplished today? Wow. And I thought he thought I was off my freaking rocker. I didn't think I'd ever hear from him again. I got a text last night from his daughter saying, I called my dad today to ask how his day was. And he goes, I felt like a champion <laughs> to hear about my workout at the gym. This 85-year-old went to the gym after that. I'm just like, touchdown. Yeah, yeah. Like, stuff like that. It's amazing. That's fun. That's fantastic, you know, because it really, I mean, it's, it's turning it. I guess the thing there is it's turning it around and it's taking the power back and it's, it's, you know, you deciding to set the agenda, you to set the tone for yourself as opposed to have other people set it for you and yep. accept what other people are putting onto you. right? 100%. And that's the same tone you should take to your business, not just your health. And that's yeah. how I tied the two together in my book. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, you know, listen, Kaylin, this has been wonderful. But before we go, yeah. I would like you to uh, tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can find out more and get in contact with you. Yeah, so super easy. If you type my name in anywhere in Google, I'm going to follow you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's um, the main website is misskaylin.com, M-I-S-S-K-L-Y-N.com. From there, you can find out about speaking, you can find out about Shark School, how we teach you how to monetize your social media. Um, and then just in general, that's the best way to reach out to me. And uh, I believe you have a new book coming out next year. Yes, ideally. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're, we're, we're flirting with titles, um, but it's all going to be more tactical on like how to grow, monetize social media, leverage sales um, to take your adversity into achievement. So I once I found this power, I wanted everybody to have it. Excellent. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRMs, another expert inside interview. See you all again for a new one soon. Thank you.